So you had some time to read the basic details of the question. This is what they give you. This is what's given. Really, um, these two things are, are not giving you anything. These could be any, uh, almost, almost. These could be almost any complex numbers. Um, given that their angles can be, well, from negative pi to pi, right, think about the argument diagram. Yeah, that's right. You've got a range there, or, or a domain, I guess you'd say, of 2 pi, which means basically you, you, your argument could be anything, right? From negative pi, which is over here, all the way to pi. So I could be facing in any direction. That's the argument. What's the other piece of information you need for a complex number? To know where it is? Modulus. It's the modulus. Ah, that actually tells you a little more about the modulus, doesn't it? Both of these numbers, the modulus would be an R at the front, wouldn't it? Right now, because there's nothing written, that means that you know R is equal to one. Okay, so that's that's kind of important, right? We might put both of these down. Mod Z and mod W, they're both one. That will become important later on. Okay. That's good. Okay, what about this? What about this? What can we do with this? Now, they actually, if you read the question, they actually try to nudge you in the right direction. That's nice, isn't it? They say, by considering the real and imaginary parts of this, or otherwise, show that one Z and W form the vertices of an equilateral triangle in the argument diagram, okay? Huh. Now, what are you going to do with this thing? Well, let's let's take their clue, right? They want to nudge us in a particular direction. Let's take their clue and have a look at this thing by taking the imaginary, the real and the imaginary parts, okay? Now, we've actually been given an equation, so I can do more than just think about the imaginary part of this. If I'm thinking about the imaginary part of this, well, these two things are equal. Do you agree? This is three complex numbers added together. Well, that should just be one complex number. So I can find out the imaginary part of the whole thing. Now, even though it's a little bit weird to think about it that way, if you take the imaginary part of this side, you should take the imaginary part of this side. Do you agree? Yeah. Because zero is, after all, just another complex number. It's just the one at the origin. So far, so good. Haven't done anything crazy, right? Okay, let's keep going a little bit. The imaginary part of this. So this is one big complex number, okay? When you add a complex number together, like for instance, if you had uh, this guy, and uh, this guy, and this guy, okay? If you added this together, you'd get one big complex number, yeah? It would be a plus c plus, a plus c plus e, yeah. there's the real part, and ib plus id plus if, there's the imaginary part, okay? Oh, yeah. So when you think about the imaginary part of the sum of all these things together, do you recognize that it's the sum of the imaginary parts. Let me say that again slowly. The imaginary part of the sum is the sum of the imaginary parts. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I can actually take that over here. I can say the imaginary part of the sum is the sum of this imaginary part and this imaginary part and this imaginary part. You with me? Is that okay? Cool. I can write down the right-hand side. What is the imaginary part of zero? Just zero, isn't it? Because imaginary is like how up or down are you? And the answer is nowhere. So that's zero. Okay, good. All right, let's keep going. Now that I have sort of broken this apart, I can take these one at a time, right? The imaginary part of one, I know what this is as well. It's also zero, because you can see where one is. There it is, right there. So it has no up or down. Okay, so imaginary part zero. Ah, okay, all right, hold on, hold on, let's, let's, let's get there, okay. You, you need a couple of extra steps yeah. before you can read that, by the way, even though that's correct. Uh, what's the imaginary part of Z? I actually know what it is, I wrote it down on the board. Uh, yeah, there it is, right? I sign theta. And in the same way, I know what the imaginary part of W is, it's I sign alpha. Okay, so this is good, this is good. What this means, uh, I'll write it like this, is that I sine alpha equals negative I sine theta. Yeah, like I've just, I've just subtracted that from both sides, okay? So this is good, this is progress. This has shown me a relationship between, remember how I started off saying, ah, oh, these guys are just like, they, they could be anywhere here. Well, now I know they can't be anywhere. Wherever uh, this number happens to be, well, this guy's going to be, going to be on the exact opposite side of the real axis, right? Because one might be up and the other one's down, or vice versa. Are you happy with that? Turn that back on. Okay, 
So far, so good. Now, I heard someone say, <laughs> oh, <laughs> excellent. This means that Z and W are complex conjugates. Now, as it happens, Z and W are complex conjugates, but I don't know that yeah. yet. What do I need for, if I had a number like X plus IY, what's its complex conjugate? X plus IY. It's minus IY. So I've got the minus IY bit. You can see they match up like that. But I need the real parts to be the same. Okay, so how am I going to reach for something like that? Okay, let's have a go. Like this worked so well for us, right? Oh, look, the imaginary part, it just sort of fell out. Well, instead of doing the imaginary part of both sides, well, let's go over here and say, what's the real part? Of both sides. Okay, so here we go. 1 plus z plus w. Mm. Okay, now in exactly the same way that I argued before, the real part of a sum is the sum of all the real parts individually. Okay, so I can write that down. It's the real part of this one, the real part of this one, and the real part of that one. Yep, uh, just like I did before, I can work out what the real part of the origin is, it's also zero, because just how far left or right are you? So that's good. And just like I did before, I can start to evaluate everything. But then I hit a snag. What's the real part of one? One. How's that? Real part of Z? Cos theta. theta. And the real part of W? Cos alpha. Huh. Now, uh, this is still true, right? This is still true. But we were kind of hoping, and, and this instinct turns out, to, this intuition turns out to be correct. We were kind of hoping to find these things to be equal to each other, okay? So, so that we have the two same real bits, right? At the moment, I don't have that, uh, but I do have this. I'm just gonna jot this down first. Um, this is true, but it's not exactly what I was looking for. Uh, it shows me that these two are related in some integral way, but don't, it certainly doesn't show me that they're identical. Um, and I, I don't know what else it can show me, right? So I did what the question told me to do. I, I did something with the imaginary part, I considered that. I considered the real part, so I'm not quite there. Now look back at the question, let's look back. It says, uh, you've got all of this information I've already written down. I've considered the real imaginary parts. I want to show that one, there's one, and Z and W form an equilateral triangle in the argand diagram. Okay, now just, just work with me for a second, okay? Where could Z and W be? Where could they possibly be? Okay, now you know that Z and W are not just anywhere, right? Like they could be facing in all kinds of different directions, but in terms of distance, in terms of modulus, they are all... They're all on a, we actually have a name for this particular thing, right? What's that called? Unit it's circle. the unit circle. They're all on the circumference of the unit circle, right? Which means that I actually know exactly where Z and W have to be. If one's here, and remember that apparently they form an equilateral triangle, right? There's only, well, I mean, there's two different points. So the two points have to be in two particular spots. Where are they going to be? Yeah, well, you can sort of see it, right? Yeah. You're like, okay, one should be over here, and, and one should be over here. Right? So, so that, that, that gives you this, right? If they're going to be, we know that these two are going to be opposite, like where else could you position them? And the answer is you can't position them anywhere else. Now we knew that because we could draw, you could see it because they had to be on the circle. They had to be on the circle. And we haven't used that fact yet. Like we noticed it, we noticed it, but we haven't used it. So how can I use it? 